The vitamin K shot in newborns has become a real controversial topic. Now, in this video, we're going to go over five myths and I'm going to tell you the real truth about them, including some of the data behind that. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. Myth number one, vitamin K is naturally low in newborns, so it must be okay. So how does vitamin K actually work? Well, vitamin K is actually a coenzyme. What does that mean? It can't actually form the functions of an enzyme by itself. What it does is that it will actually attach to an enzyme and produce the proteins that will help with formation of a clot so that we can essentially stop a bleeding from anywhere in the body. Now, even though mother has vitamin K in her body, and by the way, I'll talk about some of the nutrition that you can use to be able to increase your vitamin K as a grown up. But even though mom's vitamin K may be okay, it actually very little passes through the placenta. Where does the baby get vitamin K from? Well, it will actually produce its own vitamin K in the liver, although unfortunately at first, the liver is really immature, it's still developing, so it will only produce small amounts. The other way where it can get vitamin K is from the bacteria. There are some processes that happen in the intestines and the bacteria will actually be able to create vitamin K that then the baby can absorb. But at first, there's not a whole lot of really healthy bacteria within the gut and therefore it takes time for that bacteria to create enough vitamin K that it can really help with the, with the clotting process that we talked about already. Now, like we said before, yeah, naturally you have low levels of vitamin K, but why is this really important is because with low levels of vitamin K, it does increase the risk of bleeding inside the brain. You can cause what is called intracranial or intraventricular hemorrhage, hemorrhage meaning bleeding. That is what we're trying to prevent. Even though nature has made for babies to have low levels of vitamin K, that doesn't mean that we don't have the tools to be able to prevent this bleeding from happening. As always, if you're really enjoying this information and you want to know more, go ahead and subscribe. In my channel, we basically talk all about babies, NICU, neonatology, medicine. So if you really enjoyed this, hit subscribe and let's continue with the video. Myth number two, it's okay to wait until the baby makes vitamin K on its own. We know from data before there was standard treatment with vitamin K shots is that one in 60 to one in 200 babies can actually get bleeding if they don't receive the vitamin K shot, especially occurring within the first week. Now beyond that first week, you can have one in 15,000 to one in 25,000 babies can have bleeding after that first week, but the bleeding can be a little bit different. Now, I don't want you to freak out. Obviously this slide has, you know, it's really busy and it goes through the whole clotting process. What you really need to know here is that vitamin K will actually activate this molecule called prothrombin. And prothrombin really down the road is the one that really helps to be able to stabilize the fibrin clot, to be able to really form that little mesh that can actually stop the bleeding. So there are three types of vitamin K deficiency bleeding. You can have early, classical, or late onset. In early, you actually have bleeding within the first 24 hours. This can be very severe. And this is mostly due to moms receiving certain medications, like for example, seizure medications. In classical, this usually happens within day one to about one week. This tends to be less severe, and it's usually presents with some bruising or maybe bleeding around the area of the umbilicus, sometimes even in the stool. In late onset, this happens over that one week up to about six months. This is most commonly seen, however, between weeks two to about two months. And this, is, this can be also very severe because 30 to 60% of these babies in late onset actually present with bleeding into the brain. What are some of the signs that we need to look out for for a baby that's actually bleeding? Well, you can have a baby look pale. This is because they have some anemia. The red, red blood cells in the blood are low. You can also see some easy bruising, you can see some oozing at the area of the belly button or the umbilicus where the cord was attached. You may also see some blood within the diaper. As the baby has a stool, you'll see a blood around the stool or in the diaper itself. If the baby has had a circumcision, then the uh, area of the circumcision may still have some oozing or bleeding that's not easily clotting. And you can also see some excessive sleepiness, tiredness, not wanting to eat and you can even see some seizures as well. So this is really important. So let's review this. Being pale, easy bruising, bleeding within the area of the umbilicus, blood in the stool, being really sleepy, difficult to wake up, or actually using from a circumcision if it receives one. Now remember we talked about just waiting to see when the level becomes normal. 
Well, it becomes normal up to about six months of life when the baby usually begins to start taking solids. So you can imagine at any point during all this time, bleeding can happen, which can be very dangerous, not only at that moment, but also to the neurodevelopment of the baby. All right, let's stop here to talk about a fun fact. Remember I mentioned that there are certain foods that will actually increase your level of vitamin K or are high in levels of vitamin K? Well, let's talk about them. You have the kiwi, you can have grapes, avocados, blackberries, and blueberries. All these are found to have higher levels of vitamin K. That does not mean that necessarily the levels in your bloodstream will be high by eating all of these together, but you know, it will hopefully nourish if you are looking to do that for an adult. Keep in mind again, if you're pregnant, make sure you always talk to your OBGYN to ensure that you can eat these. Myth number three, there are so many complications from vitamin K shot and it is too risky for me. So the vitamin K shot is extremely safe. If you are one kilo or above, you get one milligram. If you're less than one kilo, you get 0.5 milligrams. This shot is given in the thigh. And although there is an oral solution, it is not very effective at all. You never really know how much of what you give actually passes into the baby and is absorbed. So we usually recommend doing the thigh shot because that is the most effective to prevent, again, that bleeding in the brain and other parts of the body. Now, of course, like any shot, there can be complications. Well, the complications actually occur at the site. Usually there is some bruising, there can be some bleeding at the site itself, and you can get these little kind of nodules or little kind of bumps at the site. One other complication that can happen is a cellulitis or an infection around the area. This is pretty rare, but it can still happen and it's usually treated locally. If you do see anything like that, make sure you reach out to your pediatrician or definitely if you're having any fevers. Myth number four, vitamin K causes jaundice. So what is jaundice? Jaundice is that yellowish discoloration that you get in the skin. It is also hyperbilirubinemia, meaning the bilirubin in your bloodstream has gone up. Hyperbilirubinemia is actually extremely common in newborn babies. About 60% of babies will have an elevated bilirubin. Some of those actually have to come to the NICU, to the neonatal intensive care unit, where you use a special blue light to be able to break down the chemicals and that way you can actually pee or poop out the extra bilirubin. Why was it thought that hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice can be caused by the vitamin K shot? Well, it happened because it actually can occur when you give extremely high doses of the shot, 30 to 60 times of what we normally do. But if you're giving normal shots at the normal levels, you do not see the jaundice. Myth number five, the vitamin K shot can cause childhood cancer. So where is this idea that the shot can cause cancer? Well, it actually comes from a really early study. In the early 1990s, there was a very small study that came out from the UK. And that study showed that there was some correlation between the babies that received vitamin K and those that then went on to develop childhood cancer, specifically leukemia. Now, when you look at that study though and break it down, it was actually 18 babies that received some type of medication during the birth and 16 of those received vitamin K. The author said that the association was extremely loose and more studies and larger studies needed to be done to be able to determine whether this association of giving the vitamin K shot actually was the one that caused an increase in childhood cancers. Subsequently, multiple studies were done in the 1990s and later on showing that there was no association when looking at much larger numbers, no association of getting the vitamin K shot and developing cancers like leukemia. All right, everybody, let me leave you with this one thought. Remember that the decisions that we make on our babies today will be affecting them for the rest of, rest of their lives. So just remember, vitamin K shot is extremely, extremely safe. We've been giving it to millions of babies and they have done very well. So we do wanna prevent them. I have seen the babies that have developed bleeding in the brain when they haven't received vitamin K and it can really have a very negative effect of them. If you were to go ahead and decline the vitamin K shot, make sure you follow the signs. If you don't remember them, go back to the slide where I talked about the, the different type of signs that you can see in a baby if there's any concern for bleeding anywhere in the body. But be sure if there are any concerns at all, do call your pediatrician. This is something you cannot delay. Okay, for those that are learning a little bit of Spanish, I wanted to go ahead and give you five words that you can use of something that we talked about. For example, vitamin K, vitamina K, vaccine, vacuna, bleeding, sangrado, brain, cerebro, and jaundice, it's a little bit harder, 
ictericia, ictericia. Muy bien, seguimos. If you have any questions, please do put them in the comment section. If you like this, please share it with other families or other of your co-workers if you're a healthcare worker. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you with the next video.